let's derive the energy density for the electric and the magnetic field. So I have the electric and the magnetic field. Imagine there's some region of space where there's an electric and a magnetic field. It could be a light wave. Wow, okay. Or it could be a capacitor. It doesn't really matter. But if there's an electric field, there's energy stored in the field. Uh, but we have, we can describe it as energy per unit volume. So we want to find U, which is, that's the energy now, that's not the electric field. I know it looks like the same thing. Divide by the volume. And I want to do that for both the electric and the magnetic fields. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So let's start with the electric field. So imagine, I'm trying to make sure I'm in right. Okay. So imagine that I have a constant electric field. One way to make a constant electric field is with a parallel plate capacitor. So imagine that I have charge, a positive charge on this side and a negative charge on that side. And that's a total charge of Q. That's minus Q. That makes an electric field that's constant inside of there. And this has a, a separation of D. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then it has a, a surface area of A. Okay, so that's your standard uh, capacitor. We know that the electric field inside the capacitor is some value, but what I want to do is to find the electric field just due to one plate. So the electric field, the magnitude of that is going to be Q over A over 2 epsilon naught. That's the electric field just due to the positive plate. If you have the two plates added together, they both have electric fields in the same direction, so they both add together and the two's gone. So that's where that comes from. But that's the electric field due to just one plate. So now I'll imagine that I take that electric field uh, and it exerts a force on this negatively charged plate. So if I just draw that right here, here's my negatively charged plate. It has a charge Q and there's an electric force pulling this way. And I'm gonna pull it this way, Fp. What if I want to take that capacitor and pull it apart? So I'm gonna pull apart the capacitor and I'm gonna move it over some distance, uh, delta S. So let's just draw this right here. So I'm gonna move it to right here and this distance is uh, delta S. And so now we have an, a larger capacitor. We've changed the volume. There's our volume thing we're gonna to get to. Okay, so if I want to do that, how much energy would it take to pull that capacitor apart? Now I'm just pulling it a tiny little bit. So the, the, the idea of a parallel plate capacitor with a constant field is still, still true. I can pull this a super, super tiny amount. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if I do that, then I can say the work is F dot delta S as a vector, right? The work done by me on the capacitor would be F dot delta S. And they're in the same direction. So this is going to be the pulling force times the displacement. But that's equal to the electric force. And the electric force, Fe, the magnitude of that, is Q times the electric field. And that's the electric field. So I can calculate the work, which is the change in energy. Okay, so work is the change in energy, and that's going to be equal to uh, the force, Q times E times delta S. And let's put in our expression for E right there, and I get, I have a Q and a Q, so I get uh, Q squared delta S over 2 epsilon naught A. Right, I just... Q array is the common way of writing that because we write that as the charge density, the surface area density, Q over A. But I'm going to put the A down there, and that's what I get. So that's the work done in pulling the whole thing apart. Now, let's find the energy density. U equals the change in energy over the volume. And the volume of this new space, oh, this should actually technically be change in volume. The change in volume is going to be this space in here. So that's the area of the plate times delta a, uh, S. So I get delta E over A delta S. Well, let's put this in. So I get uh, Q squared delta S over 2 epsilon naught. And then I have an A times an A, so I get A squared, and then I have a delta S. The delta S is cancel, and I have that. Now, I you'll notice here that I have Q over 
q squared over a squared and I have an epsilon naught. The electric field inside of there in the parallel plates, E is equal to q over a over epsilon naught. So E squared is q squared over a squared over epsilon naught squared. I mean, duh, right? So if I look right here, I have just an epsilon naught. I have the q squared over a squared. But if I multiply uh, this by epsilon naught squared, no, I want to divide by, I want to multiply by epsilon naught over epsilon naught. So now I have the epsilon naught squared in the bottom, I get that. So I get, I have the one half, one half epsilon naught e squared. And that, we'll put it in a different color, is the energy density of the electric field, where epsilon naught is the constant. Let's write that up here. Ue one half epsilon naught e squared. Can you see that? Oh, it's barely not really. Let's move it down a little bit. U, I forgot my chalk and I caught it. Ue one half epsilon naught e squared. Now I'll put a, a box around that. Okay, now we want to do the magnetic field. It's a little trickier, but we're going to do it anyway. So let's find the energy density in the magnetic field. And this is in joules per cubic meter. So you can make a constant electric field with a capacitor. What if I want to make a constant magnetic field? I'm going to use a solenoid, which is also an inductor. Okay. So suppose I have a solenoid. And I run some current in there, I. And that current comes out, I. Uh, and that's going to make a magnetic field inside of there, B, which you can't really see. And if this has an area of A and a length of D, so that has the same parameters as the, the capacitor area in D, then B is equal to mu naught in I over D. So N is the number of turns on that loop. I can also find the change in potential delta V uh, of the solenoid. The change in potential across here, I can write this as, I'm going to write just the magnitude because we only care about the magnitude of the energy. I'm going to write this as L di dt. So this says that if I change the current here, it's going to change the magnetic field, which is going to change the uh, flux through the loop and it's going to make uh, a, a backwards pushing voltage. And that's Faraday's law. And so we call this an inductor. So the value of the inductor, I'm not going to drive the value of inductance, but L for a solenoid is equal to, oh my gosh, I forgot it. Mu, that's right, mu naught n squared a over d. And it's n squared because each one of these uh, loops affects each one of the loops. So you get an n squared. Now that's the voltage. And so I can now calculate the power. The power of any element is I delta V. If I know the current and the voltage, the product is the power. And also know that the power is the rate of change of energy in joules per second, which is a watt. So now let's just put in this. I know this is going to be equal to I, and then delta V is going to be L di dt. If I want to solve for the energy, let's just multiply both sides by dt and integrate. So am I still in the thing? Okay. So let's put it over, ah, let's put it over here. So de equals I L D I D T D T and these DTs cancel and you think you can't do that or you can't do that but you can you totally can okay so now delta E the change in energy if I change the current it's going to be the integral of L I D I because that's what I'm left with 
I can integrate that. That's not hard. L is a constant. So DE delta E. Am I running out of room? I feel like I'm running out of room. I'm going to erase. I'm going to leave that there. So let me just put this up here. That's why I have a board, right? I have a board so that I can't do this. Delta E is the integral of L I D I. Well, that's pretty easy. L is a constant. I D I, the integral is going to be I squared over 2. So this is going to be equal to 1 half L I squared. That's the change in energy for the whole thing. Now let's divide by the volume. So I can get the energy density U delta E over the volume. And this is going to be this, 1 half L I squared. And then I'm going to divide by the volume of the whole thing, which is A times D. Now let's put in our expression for L. So I get U is 1 half. L is mu naught n squared a over d. Then I have a d d. I have another d down there, right? I have that a. And then I have uh, i squared. Well, we get some stuff happening. A's cancel. D is d squared. Uh, and now I can use this. So I want to write it like this. So let's just put it as 1 half mu naught. And I'm going to multiply this by um, mu naught over mu naught. And then I'm going to have the n squared, i squared over d squared. So I have a mu naught squared over mu naught. I just did a little tr trick there. And if I have mu naught squared, n squared, i squared over d squared, that's b squared. So now we have it. U is 1 half. This stuff goes with that, but I have a 1 over mu naught. 1 over mu naught magnitude of b squared. And I can put my, my thing around there. So my total energy density is going to be 1 half mu naught b squared plus 1, one half 1 over mu naught b squared plus 1 half epsilon naught e squared. So if I have an electric and a magnetic field, that's the total energy density in the electromagnetic field. Do you have fun with the chalkboard? I like the chalkboard. But I don't know. Still can't decide. Okay, that's it.